Hi everyone, welcome back. It is Friday and we are so glad to have you with us on this eighth day of November. A pretty nice day looking through the glass for the most part. A bit cold but definitely sunny and bright outside. We've still got some winter weather to talk about here in this season of fall early next week. We've got a little better idea as to what you might see in the form of a few flakes Monday and into your Tuesday. Uh, and your Veterans Day forecast, of course, falls right in the middle of that. We have several other headlines to pass along to you tonight and it's never a way you want to end any show we always try to find something positive for friday however more bad news more tragic news for local families as i have an update for you and some information to pass along from the family of jared helton here in mcgolfin county as he and his co-worker um, mr stafford are on their way back to their home uh, and the funeral home of course where services have been set tentatively at least uh, at this hour Two Johnson Countyans lost their lives in a crash last night in western Kentucky. A 20-year-old woman and a 32-year-old man. We'll have that. Well, I do have some congratulations to bestow on a McGoffin County and Johnson County man for uh, a major step in their law enforcement careers. Your calendar and weather, that's all full of information as well. And we'll pick it up with an update, of course, on uh, the services that are being set for two local men who were killed, of course, in that crash on I-40 in Tennessee earlier this week, as well as some more official news released in regards to how the crash happened in the first place. I'll have those headlines starting right after this. We have finally done it. After years and years of extensive testing, we not only invented the chicken sandwich, we have perfected the chicken sandwich. Come and try it and love it with a big, famous dip, breast strip, pickles and mayonnaise, or however you like it fixed. And if you like, make it a double. Just make your way to Lee's to get it and grab a cookie while you're there. At your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe, where even our ice is famous. At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment, and for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance, or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. Real and real competitive, hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. For huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years, Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. It can be one of the hardest parts of being a parent. You can beg them, bribe them, hold them down and try to force them, and sometimes you still can't get them to take their medicine. Well, problem solved at Parkway Pharmacy with Flavor-X. Let your kids customize their medicine with some of the best flavors that really do taste great and it's totally free with your child's prescription at Parkway Pharmacy. So stop the suffering, theirs and yours, for free, and get your Flavor X flavored medicines at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. I'm still awaiting some further details to be released by the Tennessee Highway Patrol, but we do have some more information to pass along tonight in regards to that incident or crash. I hesitate to call it an accident. that claimed the lives of two local men earlier this week near Memphis, Tennessee. While we're still awaiting those details, as I initially reported to you uh, after speaking to the family in the first report and those thereafter this week, the Penske Rental Truck Company says that that semi-truck, which literally plowed into those two TDOT contractors working with A&A, had been reported stolen to police prior to that crash happening. I have some more on the crash and some more on services in, the, in tonight's program as well that have been set and are being set for these two local men. A representative from that company said that their customer reported the truck stolen sometime before the wreck took place. The company did not release any more details as to where or when the truck was stolen and referred any other further questions to Tennessee Highway Patrol who says that they are still actively investigating the crash that led to the deaths of two local young men near Arlington, Tennessee, around 4 o'clock 
Wednesday morning. The crash, as we well know by now, claiming the lives of 22-year-old Jared Helton of Sagersville, 30-year-old Justin Stafford of Paintsville, injuring another McGoffin Countyan, Cody Fultz, who is going to recover, as well as a Tennessee Highway Patrolman, who is also going to recover. I've spoken today with members of the family on and off on several occasions and have a few other things that they have asked me to share. While funeral services have been set for Mr. Stafford under the care of the Phelps and Son Funeral Home in Johnson County, services are yet to be arranged but to be made in the morning for Mr. Helton here of Sagersville in McGoffin County. I have tentative arrangements, though, in regards to visitation and funeral service times in just a few moments when we get to our obituary listings. However, Jared's family asked me to let everyone know that he and Stafford are on their way home. Their bodies were in Nashville around 5 o'clock this afternoon with an estimated time of coming into McGoffin County sometime around the 10 o'clock area where friends and family and local EMS and law enforcement and anyone who would like to be there are invited to be at the McGoffin County line on the Mountain Parkway for an official escort to the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Once again, that expected to be sometime around 10 o'clock tonight. Also, early next week, we'll be sitting down with members of Jared's family and a close personal friend as they would like to share their thoughts on his life and his passing. And moving on, I'm still awaiting a few more details, and I will have a complete breakdown with as much as I can have in just a few moments on another crash, this one that happened in western Kentucky last night, claiming the lives of two Johnson Countyans. For now, though, a word of congratulations that we need to pass along. I know one of these men quite close. He was a former police officer with the Sagersville Police Department. He will serve us very well as a trooper with Post 9 of the Kentucky State Police, who is welcoming six new troopers to their ranks this week. Actually, just a few days ago last week, those include two local men, the former Sagersville City Police Officer from here in McGoffin County and a now police trooper, Kentucky State Police Trooper from Johnson County as well. While you can't pick them out easily in this picture, this picture was too good not to show, and I couldn't find another good one of them individually before airtime. But somewhere in there is Tracy Salyer of Salyersville and Mark Spencer of Paintsville. These two men were among nearly 50, 48 cadets to be exact, who recently graduated from the training academy on October the 25th following the intense program. Applicants like Salyer in the 5th LEAP class. Those cadets are required to have at least two years of service in Kentucky and completion already of their DOCJT training. Training, nevertheless, consisted of a variety of areas, as you can well imagine, law in traffic, juvenile, constitutional and other areas, weapons training, evidence collection, drug identification, electronic crimes, sex crimes, homeland security. That list is too great to continue to share. And these cadets are also among the third class to benefit from new hiring guidelines, which were set by Kentucky's legislature a couple of years ago, which says that any one of them who has a high school diploma or GED and three years of full-time work experience can apply to be employed by the Kentucky State Police and, as well, earn an associate's degree while they undergo their training. Congratulations to Tracy Salyer and, as well, to Mark Spencer. Congratulations again. More news in just a moment. You're going to absolutely fall in love with all the new arrivals at the seasonal shop from all the autumn colors and styles in ladies' designs, shoes and accessories, Charlie Page, Mud Pie, you know the name brands, to jewelry, Simply Southern, Natural Life, caps, cups, and more, to rooms of home decor. And all you'll need to decorate for the fall and Halloween seasons, plus everything from coffees to candles, but hurry because everything Christmas is already arriving daily and will be out soon and fall will be gone before you know it. At Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. SSI and disability cases are harder to win these days. You need all the help you can get. If the government has turned you down, I will not. Many factors are considered when a claim is being processed, like your age, education, physical, and mental disabling conditions. When it comes time to winning your disability case, you should not face a federal judge alone. You need an attorney who is experienced, determined, hardworking, knowledgeable, and dedicated 
to helping you win benefits that you deserve. If you need help with your SSI or disability case, call me, Donald Wayne McFarland, and let me go to work for you. Right now, for pennies on the dollar, a huge selection of like-new laptop computers, a fresh stock of video games, the Cadillac of dog tracking and training systems, new hunting rifles, accessories, and ammo. And they always stock, buy, sell, and pawn gold and silver coins and jewelry with a new selection just in at Parkway Gun and Pawn in Sagersville, 349 Pawn. Here's the latest we know about a two-car crash in western Kentucky last night that claimed the lives of two Johnson Countyans. A 20-year-old woman who was behind the wheel of a vehicle that pulled into the path of another vehicle, an SUV. She and her passenger, also from Johnson County, were pronounced dead following the collision at an area hospital. The crash happened in Trigg County near Cadiz last night. We know that it happened sometime around 8.30 also near the intersection of U.S. 68 Bypass Road and Kentucky 139 South near Cadiz. State police reports say that per their preliminary investigation, the driver of a Volkswagen Beetle, a Staffordsville woman identified as 20-year-old Emily Lines, failed to yield at the intersection and pulled out in front of an oncoming SUV. The SUV hit the car in the passenger side. The driver of the SUV was identified as 56-year-old John McGraw from that area who told authorities that he was simply not able to avoid the collision after the vehicle pulled into his path. Emily Lines and McGraw, the drivers of the two vehicle, and a third person, a passenger in Lines' vehicle, identified as a Wittensville man, 32-year-old Matthew Cook, were all taken to a nearby hospital. That was where Emily Lines and Matthew Cook, who were in the vehicle together, both from Johnson County, were then pronounced dead from their injuries. Autopsies were set for the two to take place in Louisville sometime earlier today. The condition of the other driver was not updated as of airtime, while Kentucky State Police were still investigating the crash and trying to reconstruct the scene. Funeral services for Lines and Cook are also pending. Still much more to come. That begins with tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. A couple of new announcements, a couple of quick reminders, and from there we'll work our way slowly to a, an ever-changing forecast that I'm not liking very much in regards to where temperatures are going. They keep continuing to fall every 24 hours. And right now they have fallen to about 16 degrees on Tuesday night, following maybe our first snowfall. First, I've got a missing pet, and this pet is an older adult Rottweiler, last seen a few days ago in the Rock House area off of 460. If you've seen this black and mahogany pet, he's very loving and he little, got a little age on him, so they're looking for as much help as possible. The phone number, 262-7673, 262-7673. Don't forget veterans and all active duty personnel and all of your families tomorrow at 1, the annual Veterans Appreciation Dinner hosted by the Sagersville Masonic Lodge. Also, a reminder that next Monday, excuse me, not Monday, Monday is Veterans Day, next Wednesday... The 13th, from 9 to noon and 1 to 3, two sessions of the Teleworks USA job offer sessions. This job fair will be held at the McGoffin County Health Department, but you have to pre-register. Do so by calling 216-6811. And the McGoffin County Head Start Program, taking applications for the next school year if your child will be three or four years of age by August the 1st. And we're taking your calendar announcements with birthdays and anniversaries, too, anytime we can. Just tell me, and we'll tell everyone about them. Turning to funeral service announcements as presented this Friday evening by the McGoffin County Funeral Home, 22-year-old Jared Lee Helton of Sagersville, of course, as we know, passed away Wednesday of this week. And as I referred to earlier, uh, on his way back home into the McGoffin County Funeral Home where funeral services will be held. They have not been officially set. The family is making arrangements tomorrow. But as of right now, as, as far as I understand, they believe that visitation will be Sunday night and Monday night and services Tuesday, you can go to the McGough County Funeral Homes website sometime tomorrow afternoon 
to find out more. But that is the tentative schedule as of right now. And for his co-worker, Justin Blake Stafford of East Point, who passed away, of course, at the same time in the same incident, he is survived by his mother, Jill Stafford, and daughter, Emily Sage Stafford, and his fiancée, Kiara Sloan. His visitation is Sunday 5 till 9, Monday 9 till 9, and prior to Tuesday morning services that will begin at 11 o'clock from the Phelps and Son Funeral Home. In lieu of flowers, the family requests that donations be made to the Emily Sage Stafford Fund in honor of her father. And lastly tonight, Dathel Lou Reed Helton, 71 of Sayersville, passed away yesterday. She was married to George Helton, who preceded her in death. She survived by a son, Jeffrey Dale Bailey and daughter Jeannie Marie Boatman. Visitation will be after 5 o'clock this Sunday. Services begin Monday at 1 from the Bethlehem to Calvary Church. The McGoffin County Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4x4 or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint, and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. Welcome to my vlog. Make sure to leave a comment. Black Friday sales are going to be huge this year. Adults and their phones. It's going to be a low All right. Hand them over. Appalachian Wireless always wants you to get the most out of your phones, but we also encourage you to set them down and enjoy time with your loved ones. Happy Thanksgiving from your friends at Appalachian Wireless. With that said, let's take a look at the potential for our first winter hit, followed by a little food for thought in our today's date in weather history, followed by your forecast, which has been updated. It's even colder and maybe even a bit snowier. Yeah, we're talking about some chances for some snow. The real first shot of wintry weather possible Monday night into your Tuesday for who? Pretty much all of us in eastern Kentucky shaded in the blues. Uh, some potential light snow accumulations with the very coldest air that we've seen thus far this fall, mind you. It's still very much fall. Temperatures are likely not getting above freezing on your Tuesday. So there could be a few slick roads. Uh, and that's just all I have to say on that. <laughs> Except for going on to today's date in our weather history. Here's a little comparison for you. Roll back the clocks, back to 1986, says the National Weather Service, and that's when really strong, heavy thunderstorms were laying down three to five inches of rain over much of the area. Morgan County got hit first. Flash flooding, prompting evacuations. Floyd, Johnson, McGoffin, Perry, Breathitt counties, all feeling the same effects from the same rain. Families were stranded in Pikeville after a silt pond dam gave way, and just, it was a mess. Back in 1986. We don't have anything like that in the forecast, but we've certainly got some January weather in store. And like I said, a little wintry hit possible early next week. To wrap up this week, this evening, a low of 25 overnight. Mostly clear skies and a light and variable wind. Nothing too exciting or unusual. Tomorrow, we're going to warm up and improve. Glad to say for your weekend, 50 and sunny for your Saturday. Nighttime lows close to 40. Sunday, 58 and sunny. A southwesterly wind will be noticeable Sunday, 3 to 5 to gust upwards of 23 miles per hour on your Sunday. Those winds are out and ahead of a Veterans Day cold front that gives us on your Monday, the 11th of the 11th, a 30% chance of rain, mainly after 3 o'clock Monday afternoon, with daytime highs in the mid-50s. But Monday night, temperatures fall down to a very cold 24, and that precipitation looks to be hanging around for a while at the same time, and some rain and snow possibly becoming all snow after midnight on your Veterans Day Monday. And we're not done. That chance of snow will continue 
into early next week. I think it will hang on throughout the overnight. No great accumulations, like I said, but some light snow possible through the first few hours of your Tuesday morning, maybe before noon, and some flurries continuing up until about 3 thereafter. And I'm holding off on daytime highs, but here we go. I'm going to have to get to them. Daytime highs newly adjusted for Tuesday. 28 degrees for the high, if you want to call it that. 16 for the low that night. Uh, flurries will be gone by that evening with mostly cloudy skies left behind. But 28 and 16 with some early a.m. snow on your Tuesday. We'll climb out of that hole slowly. Wednesday, 34 and mostly sunny. 24 that night. More sunshine, 46 Thursday. More sunshine still in about 47 on next Friday. No precipitation in store after Tuesday's winding down the snow showers. And that's going to do it for this Friday. We already have a lot in store for next week. We hope to see you then. Thank you. Have a good weekend and a good night.